Hey, what's going on guys? This is Youth Man. Before we jump into the video, I wanna tell you about a contest that I'm doing over on Patreon. I'm over the next probably, I'd say about a month, I'm gonna be giving away all of these DTS and Oro 3D demo discs. And so we're gonna be doing just various contests. I just posted the first contest over on patreon.com slash youthman. If you're interested in one of those, you can head over there and check that out. So with that out of the way, I hope you guys have been enjoying the home theater tour from Kansas City. These guys have some absolutely insane home theaters. They've done some really creative stuff. A lot of them have some massive subwoofers. Uh, the last one had dual 24 inch near field subwoofers. Um, the one that I'll be posting tomorrow at noon Eastern Standard Time, Sheldon has eight 18 inch subwoofers behind his screen. And then for uh, the, he's got a uh, Hover Easy platform that has, oh my goodness, I think he's got 14 12 inch subwoofers. So some of them are on a platform. He's even got some mounted directly to the back of the seat rest. It's crazy, man, absolutely crazy. So I think you're gonna really enjoy that one. We've got a lot of other ones coming up. Five more to be exact, because I've already posted three. One will go live tomorrow, and then five more after that. So if you love these home theater tours, definitely let me know down in the comments below. I know it's a little bit different format. It's a little bit longer format, but I'm wanting to kind of more engage with the homeowner and find out like the why and the how, the decisions behind why they did certain things or how they did certain things or you know, what did they regret and what would they change? Those types of things, really just to provide value for you guys that are building your own home theater, maybe you're upgrading your home theater, or maybe you're brand new to the hobby and you're just looking for ideas and inspiration. So that's the whole purpose of the home theater tours. So if you like that, make sure you subscribe because I've got plenty of more home theater tours coming your way. So with that said, one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about, or the thing I wanted to talk about in this video is during my trip to Kansas City, I had an opportunity to experience three different types of TR, tactical response um, devices, I guess we'll call them that. And a big thanks to Joe, Joe Intel. Um, he actually gave me the idea of making this video. He said, Michael, what do you think about the three types? That would be a good video to share with your audience. Um, so I just wanted to give you my thoughts, my impressions of it. Now, first of all, well, I'll give you the three. Number one is near field subwoofers. Near field subwoofers are when you place a subwoofer, say for instance, directly behind the seat. And what I found out during the trip is that a near field subwoofer, you're gonna get the best response, an ideal response, when you have that subwoofer, let's say you have an 18 inch driver, you need that driver spaced 18 inches behind you, okay? So from the front of that plane, to kind of like the middle of your chest, that's where you want it. If you've got a 24 inch driver, you need that subwoofer 24 inches from you. And that's where you're gonna feel it the most and it's gonna make the most seamless transition. So that's the first TR, tactical response, uh, or tactile, not tactical, that's military. Uh, tactile response, okay? So we're talking about physically feeling the base in your room. Okay, so that's near field subwoofers. The other um, type that I experienced was um, like butt kickers or bass shakers and what they call tactile transducers. They're usually a little device that you'll mount um, beneath your theater seats or beneath your couch. Sometimes you'll mount it directly to the frame. Some people build like a platform and mount it to those. But basically these bass transducers or tactile transducers they basically vibrate and they shake. And so in your theater, when you're watching a movie and something explodes, they will kind of, you know, shake along with what's happening in the movie. And that um, will also vibrate your chair so you feel that tactile sensation. So that's number two, that's a tactile transducer. And then the third type, and there's basically three different types in this, and I'll just call them platform. And so there is a boss platform, there's a hover boss platform, and then there's also a hover easy platform. 
And so in a nutshell, and I don't know the ins and outs of each specific one, you can use uh, Google just to find out the difference, but I've experienced all three of those during this trip and even on a previous trip in Wisconsin and Illinois. Um, so each one of these, pretty much, you're going to take a subwoofer. Sometimes that's mounted to a platform. Sometimes there's a bicycle inner tube like you'll see in tomorrow's home theater with Sheldon. He has the Hover Easy platform. And so on his, he has um, subwoofers mounted upside down. They're firing down inside a, kind of like a, think of a bicycle tube. And then beneath that is say, for instance, like a piece of plywood. And then above that's a piece of plywood. So kind of sandwiched in two pieces of wood is this inner tube and that subwoofer is firing into that. So that's just one type of that platform type. And so again, you can do your research on that, which one's best for you if you're looking at doing a platform type tactile response um, system in your setup. So I had a chance to experience near field, had a chance to experience several um, uh, base shakers. I had a chance to experience several of these Boss, Hover Boss, and Hover Easy platforms. And so I just wanted to share kind of my experience with that. And one of them that really helped me um, kind of figure out like, man, what do each one of these do or what are they each capable of was in Jonathan's home theater. Now you're gonna see his kind of near the end of the series um, from Kansas City tour. But Jonathan had it set up to where he had all three of those in his setup. Um, and I forget which platform he had, if it was Boss or Hover Boss. I don't think it was a Hover Easy. Um, but he had near field sub, had an 18 inch driver right behind your main seat. He had butt kickers. And on top of that, he had um, the, let's just call it the platform as well. And the cool thing is he was able to go into the mini DSP and we could turn off all three of those, turn on one or two or, or one at a time. And it really allowed me to kind of experience each sensation by itself instead of, and he also had five 18s up front too. I'm telling you, these guys in Kansas City, man, they're a little, they're definitely over the top, man, but I love it. It was absolutely incredible. So in Jonathan's setup, it was really nice to be able to toggle on and off just the butt kickers, just the uh, near field sub or just the, the platform. And so that was really great to be able to kind of feel each sensation to see, all right, what does that sensation feel like just by itself? And so I'm gonna share with you kind of my thoughts on that. So initially, I had no, I, all right, initially in my brain before ever experiencing the near field subwoofer, so placing a subwoofer directly behind your seat, in my brain I thought, man, you're going to be able to, it's gonna be so close to your seating position that you're going to be able to really just know in your brain man, that subwoofer is right behind me. Like I'm hearing it. Um, it. It's just going to take me away from that experience. And that was absolutely not the case. Uh, when dialed in properly, and these guys spend a lot of time in calibration, when dialed in properly, it adds a huge amount of tactile response. Like your body feels it. We were listening to music. Super, super punchy. I mean, like, Every time the music hit, man, it was just thumping in your chest and your body. And again, you have control over the volume, over the levels. And so if you're thinking, man, why would I ever want to put a 24 inch behind me? Well, just because you've got a 24 inch doesn't mean you have to, you know, max out the amplifier's power and blow you out of the chair. It can do that, but you don't have to do that. You dial it in to where it's part of the system not ever drawing attention to itself. And so having that directly behind me, I found that, man, it really immersed me into what was going on in the screen. You know, when there was an explosion, when there was a beat to a song, man, it just really, um, honestly, it caused me to do this right here, man, just to, just to enjoy it, especially, especially when we're listening to music. Um, that was super, super cool. So Number one, I'm a big fan now of uh, near field subwoofers. I think they provide a incredible amount of tactile response, but also they just sound and feel really great. And the good thing about that too, 
is you could be watching something and not have to have it at reference level, but still get that really nice tactile response, which was really, really cool. Um, the downfall to near field subs is you got to have an extra amplifier. Typically in those, you're going to build a subwoofer, um, a lot of times like a DIY kind of subwoofer in a sealed cabinet usually, and you're going to power that with an external amplifier like a crown or something like that. Um, some people use iNukes and, uh, or Behringer amplifiers, a lot of different ones. Usually it's the pro style amplifiers. And so you're going to have an extra amplifier. You're going to have cables to run behind your seats. So there's definitely some challenges there, but I love the response I get from that. So definitely I'm a fan of near field subwoofers. Unfortunately in my setup, my room just isn't deep enough for that. My back seats right here, when they recline, um, pretty much the, the footrest is right up against these. I just don't have the length in my room because my cabinet's about four feet. My entire room is um, 19 feet deep. Front cabinet takes up four feet of that. So I'm only looking about 15 feet of floor space here. And I've got a 150 inch diagonal. I'm nine feet from it right now. So I can't move these seats any closer. So near field definitely is not an option here in my theater room. But if you're looking at adding some incredible tactile response to your setup, definitely consider some near field subwoofers. So let's move on to the second type. Second type uh, is the base transducers. And there's a bunch of different brands. I think Parts Express sells some inexpensive ones. And then of course there's uh, the butt kickers. Um, they're kind of known in the industry as producing some really great um, tactile response. Uh, base transducers or tactile transducers, I guess is the correct term. So that experience with those, I had several different um, home theaters that had the butt kickers and I thoroughly enjoyed those as well. I believe that I enjoyed the near field more. It just seemed much more um, kind of immersive and you didn't really notice where the base was coming from. It was just hitting you in the center of your chest and in your body and in your legs. Um, but the butt kickers provided a fantastic response. And initially, again, I had this preconceived idea that, you know, it's going to be kind of cheesy that my chair is just kind of vibrating every time something happens on a movie. But again, it's all about implementation. It's all about calibration. When you dial them in, they can feel really, really incredible. And the other thing that we found, we went to one gentleman's home and immediately uh, I think it was Jonathan. Jonathan noticed, he's like, man, they're out of alignment, okay? They're not time aligned. So what we're visually seeing on the screen, um, a fraction of a second later, that's when we're feeling the response. We're feeling the vibration in the chair. And so they went into the settings. Um, they had some calibration software and they were able to dial it in exactly to when the action took place on the screen. That's when the transducers kicked in and that provided a really, really immersive experience as well. And with both of those, the um, near field subwoofers, as well as the, um, the big uh, tactile transducers, the butt kickers um, and those types, you can turn them up too loud. I mean, we had several instances where they just let her rip and it was fun, it's exhilarating, but it's not normal. It takes you out of the experience. And so really calibrating those and getting them dialed in to where they match what's happening with the rest of your system, that's when that experience is the best. But both of those can like just rattle your teeth. I mean, it's, it's pretty phenomenal. And so to me, I'm a big fan of the near field. I'm a big fan of the tactile uh, transducers. Definitely love both of those. And I think for my setup, the butt kickers would be a much better, I, I could work with butt kickers in my room. I just don't have the space to do near field, which I wish I did. That would be really, really cool but we all have limitations in our home theaters and we've got to use you know, what we have available to us. And so then that brings me to the third and final, uh, which are the platform type. So that would be Boss, Hover Boss, and Hover Easy. So with that, I know a lot of you guys, especially in the DIY, you're fans of those. So first of all, they can shake your entire body. I mean, <laughs> we were at Sheldon's and you're gonna see in the video, I mean, Sheldon, he told us up front, he's like, look, I normally don't listen to it this loud, but, <laughs> and so he had these things cranked up and it was fun, it was exhilarating. 
we watched the scene from, um, I think it was Black Hawk Down, and it was the scene Irene. That was crazy, man. There's just this low, low, low um, infrasonic frequencies. So they're really, really low. They're below hearing. But during that scene, man, I mean, it was just like, and the whole couch, man, was just bouncing up and down. It was crazy. Um, so that can, again, that can shake you and, and really provide this massive tactile response. I remember in Wisconsin and uh, Illinois trip, David had a really small DIY home theater, awesome experience, but holy cow, dude, he had some crazy, crazy, uh, I think he had the, I think he had the hover boss, if I remember correctly. I could be wrong on that, but man, it was insane. I mean, again, we watched Hulk on that, and when you had those pulsing cannons, oh my goodness, man. And again, it it will it'll like almost throw you out of the seat. It's that powerful. But with each one of those, I've I've had an, a chance to experience the boss, the hover boss, and the hover easy. For me personally. I wasn't a huge fan. And the biggest reason isn't because it didn't have enough power. There's plenty of power in there. The biggest thing that I personally found, and I know everybody's not like this, but to me, I always found myself like feeling it from down below me. And that's where the subwoofers are placed. Now, whether or not that was a mental thing because I knew where they were at, had I just walked in and experienced it and they didn't tell me, maybe I would have felt differently, but I always felt like, okay, everything that happened on screen and I would start moving, my brain would go, okay, there's a, an inner tube kind of underneath me. And it just kind of felt, I don't know. I don't want to say like soft, but it was just, it was bouncy. I mean, honestly, I mean, and like in some of them, you can see, we're just kind of doing this. And it was just, I always felt like I was on something. Okay. Versus it's just part of the movie experience. And so for me, I'm not a big fan. Uh, now maybe I'll find somebody that has one and, and maybe they've got it set up a little bit different and I'll be a big fan then. But as of right now, um, I think my number one choice would be near field subwoofers. Number two choice would be uh, tactile transducers like the butt kickers. And then, um, you know, maybe doing a boss platform. But again, that was my least favorite out of the three. Well, guys, I'd love to know which one, if you've experienced any of these, which one of the three that you prefer the best and why do you like it? I know that that my opinion um, doesn't really matter. This is just what I like and what I've experienced, but I'd love to hear your experience. Um, and if you've got you know, a home theater that features these, man, that's awesome. There are just some great ways that you can get some tactile response what we call TR, um, in very practical ways and inexpensive ways. And even some of these, like the, uh, uh, especially like the butt kickers. So you don't really have the noise that you would with, you know, big, large, massive subwoofers. So if you're in an apartment, sometimes that makes more sense. And so each one of these, I think, have their application in a home theater and you have to decide what works best for you. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you subscribe to the channel because I've got weekly videos coming every Wednesday and Saturday. And if you're interested in supporting the channel and entering the contest for the DTS and Oro 3D disc, head over to patreon.com forward slash youthman. As always, you guys be blessed and we'll catch you in the next video.